Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Cat's Track. I would like to introduce you to my dear friend and favorite power Dan and Elena. They met in Calgary, however, were born in Romania. Dan was born in the capital city of Transylvania, a town called Brazo, next to Dracula's castle. Elena was born on the Black Sea coast in a town called Constana, or Thomas, in ancient Greek times dating back to 600 BC and the oldest city in Romania. Dan and Elena have been married for eight blissful years and they are passionate about helping emerging entrepreneurs reach their dreams and grow Calgary into a strong tech hub. I absolutely love it. What I also love about them is their fun little ways of being. <laughs> I want them to share some fun things that they do and make life so much more interesting. I want to hear about puppy that's behind us. We'll see. And shoulder <laughs> buddy on Dan, you'll see. And the little story of the week. I look forward to them sharing. Bren, thank you so much for joining us today. We very much look forward to this interview. Uh, why don't you start with the three things uh, that I just mentioned with Pinky and shoulder buddy. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Catherine, and thank you for having us. Um, Dan and I are not just married, but of course we run a business together, and um, sometimes um, somebody needs to win an argument, and that's how little Piggy entered our life, uh, because whoever gets Piggy, and we fight for this every morning, whoever gets Piggy first and puts him in their pocket, uh, gets to get the trump card. Um, so he's our little buddy that goes with us everywhere. And he's just a little tiny, tiny pig. <laughs> um, and uh, Puppy is a, is a fantastic little story for us. Um, as, as entrepreneurs, you sometimes uh, forget to check minor details, unfortunately, especially <laughs> when you're tired. And um, Puppy was supposed to be a 10 by 10 centimeter um, buy. And it was uh, a tiny little picture, and this uh, thing showed up at the door, which is fantastic. And we love him because I'm allergic to dogs, so I can't own a dog. So his name is Puppy. <laughs> I love it. And Shoulder Buddy? Uh, yeah, Shoulder Buddy was, uh, was an overseas acquisition, and um, he actually got a chance to travel uh, through uh, quite a bit of Europe and, um, and Latin America with us. And uh, he's probably been on almost every single trip, and um, uh, it, it's quite impressive because he is uh, uh, he's my little guy that uh, keeps me company when I have to go to the other room and do work, and I don't get a chance to see Elena. Oh, that's so sweet. Shoulder buddy's hilarious. Um, him and Dan are almost having identical haircuts. You know, <laughs> <laughs> almost there nowadays. COVID response team. Oh, but but we, we, keep, we keep our lives pretty light, and I think it's contributing to keeping us healthy, keeping us in love, mm -hmm. keeping us successful. Um, and those are some of the ways that, um, that we make every day special and fun amongst the two of us. Absolutely. Well, I love watching it. It's a great example for all of us. Good many <laughs> So I know I shared three questions that um, I'm hoping that we can take a little bit more time and, and um, if you have time to do that today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So the first one was, what is your greatest challenge over the last two months? We're at April. We've been in lockdown for over a month and uh, you're the most optimistic, positive people I know. Uh, what has been your greatest challenge? Well, um, I'll answer this one. Yeah. Um, our, um, our company's bread and butter, which is the oil and gas industry, um, sort of not just got hit by the COVID pandemic like every other industry, but at the same time, um, we've all seen the bitter price war that happened between uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia around um, uh, commodity pricing. Um, so we saw uh, our primary target and, and client um, go away almost overnight. So, <laughs> um, you know, when both the, the price of oil in the U.S. as well as Canada, and don't even get me started on, you know, the Western Canadian uh, select prices, um, when they took a hit, we had to go back and dream a little. 
And so we had this software um, that verifies uh, key attributes about an employee, which is really crucial in the world of oil and gas, where people are in dangerous jobs, high security, high profile jobs. Um, so we went back to the drawing board in early March and said, um, who else could benefit from a product like this in a time like this? And I think what was originally six days, which felt like weeks, because we were sort of around the clock working on this idea, um, became a, a new market expansion and opportunity for us. So we've been incredibly busy for the last two months, uh, rolling out our product in uh, industries that have essential workers, frontline workers, um, who they're working today um, or as well as in industries who are planning to have those types of employees return to work in the coming weeks so from healthcare to construction um, we've really expanded our market and um, and I guess what's what's really helped us in this process is we threw out the window any kind of red tape and the entire team became a, a very flat team where every idea was a good idea and collaboration was prime you know, number one priority for us. That's I love what you just said. Every time, every time it's an idea. And isn't it true that when things are booming, we don't necessarily listen to the people around us? It's like, oh, we're so focused on things going well. Uh, it's during these times that we get crystal clear on the things that are important. And I, ideas are super important. Yeah, and you know, I was chatting with somebody else earlier today who has a manufacturing company and they were saying that what they've learned from this uh, challenging time is how to run leaner. Because when you've been running for a few years, you know, you keep adding more bodies and more things into your business to keep up with demand. And then maybe you have a few extra processes or roles or, or things that you do or, or an office that's too big that maybe you don't really need anymore. Um, so moments like this become an opportunity to relook at your business and, and, and invent ways in which uh, you can be very successful and profitable in the future. I agree. Thanks. Awesome. Very valuable. So the next phase is the three things that you want to share with our audience today. Ooh, um, okay, I'll, I'll take a quick stab at it and I'll let Elena jump in whenever um, she feels like I might, I might go offline. So yeah, <laughs> ultimately, so she's got <laughs> in this conversation. Um, so I'd say there's um, a few things that I've, I've had a chance to think about this actually. And, uh, um, and the top three things that came to mind for me were, we're entering a world where a new model of trust is about to, um, uh, to come upon us, and I'll, I'll elaborate on that in a second. Um, the second component is, honestly, you have to continue being positive and excited. Um, yes. These times do not allow you to do anything else or shouldn't allow you to do anything else but that. And uh, lastly, I think there's something to be said about organizational brand, whoever your employer is, or if you are your own um, CEO of your own company, Brand and ethics are going to be something that are um, that are almost going to be unprecedented for where we're going to move forward. So, um, when I when I mentioned a little bit earlier about the new model of trust, to me, everything from what we do on a day to day basis between two people that we that we meet and we talk to, um, employer employee trust, uh, me walking into a store, um, and Trust for me, it's really this, how do I know that you've done everything you could have and created the same amount of precautionary steps that I took Yeah. so that when I, when I walk into, whether it's your, and I'm not naming names here, but if, if I walk into a bank teller or if I walk into a 7-Eleven or I walk into a co-op, how do I make sure that I am, um, that we've all taken the same steps to be as clean and as on point as possible coming back into this environment and trust also from a hygiene perspective of that location. So how do I know? And I trust that you as the owner um, has done everything possible to do that. And it sounds very retail-y, but this also applies to walking into, you know, an Encana tower um, and no, knowing that- No, what happened to no names, Dan? <laughs> no, I'm not pointing on anybody specifically. I'm just saying walking into any office building. Okay. Um, 
how do I how do I ultimately make sure that you know everything around me is is at this highest level of sanitization that it could have been, yeah. and that I trust that me and my coworkers are going to be safe, and um, and we're all going to be able to perform at our top uh, um, at our top capabilities, right? Because this coming back to work, uh, the mental um, health that it took on all of us uh, being at home. If you're like me, I'm a social butterfly, and honestly. Yeah. Um, Shoulder so, body only goes so far, you know, keeping Dan company all day long. <laughs> so seven weeks uh, uh, hitting this Thursday, so in a few days from now, yeah. is, is, is pretty incredible. Um, but ultimately, like I said, be positive and excited um, because everything that's coming in front of us is, is opening up new business models that we have never dreamed about. We're going to all start finding opportunities in, in areas where we might have dismissed in the past and considered as non-viable business options or opportunities. And we're, we're really just moving towards an environment where, um, you know, it's almost taking that, that concept of a gig economy to a new level where it's going to be a gig business, which is so new to a lot of us. But exciting times ahead, really, to be honest. I want to add on to what Dan was saying around, uh, you know, brand and ethics. Um, we're lucky to live in a country, in a place where um, that's really well respected. And I think there is an opportunity for the world now to expand on that and for every employer out there to treat the situation the way that they'd want to be treated. So um, I think, you know, the world is watching all of us as leaders, as business owners, uh, how we respond to this and what we do. And I, you know, that's a, I'm glad you mentioned Agreed. that. That's a, ma that's a massive takeaway from me from this situation for sure. I agree. Excellent. Oh, that's good feedback. Thank you both. And then the final part is what's the good news story or legacy story that you want to share today? Oh, go for it. You've got Piggy. <laughs> You're first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So um, I think this concept of don't stop, you know, dare to dream and definitely don't stop. It, it's, it's, a, it's a challenging time for sure, uh, but it's an incredible time as well to, to keep, you know, forging forward. Um, recognize that we're all dependent on this challenged market, the challenged industry, uh, but that doesn't mean that there isn't room to, to dream and uh, there's definitely... Um, no time to stop. So that's, um, that would be my biggest sort of takeaway and, and uh, good news story. And, and for us, we're sort of, um, what's that expression, uh, following our own advice, I guess, right? Uh, where we haven't, eating, we, our own cooking. eating our own cooking. Uh, we haven't stopped. Oh, by the way, EDMs is, yeah, um, take two people. Not in this household. <laughs> who's English whose uh, language is, you know, some first language is something other than English. When we get excited, all sorts of expressions uh, come out and we butcher uh, all sorts of idioms. So, <laughs> but yes, um, I'd say the good news story and the one thing that I've taken the most away from all of this is to, to dare to dream and, and see where that takes you. Uh, no idea is a bad idea. Uh, it's a, I don't know. My, um, my, honestly, my, my key component here is I keep going back to this, this concept of trust, um, because of its applicability and, and where it can be looked at. I mean, everything from just thinking about what your next flight is going to look like, um, thinking about what your next sports event is going to look like, um, travel, vacation, um, and even shopping, right? Like literally going into a store and physically trying out a pair of pants or a shirt. Um, that's all changing. Yeah. And it, it was interesting because recently I, I heard somebody say, you know, our, our definition of, um, of dinner in a movie is a thing of the past. And I have no idea how this um, younger generation that's, you know, in their teens right now that are, that were just coming up to that dinner in a movie and going out with a girlfriend or a boyfriend and having that, um, um, that opportunity to express that and understand that it's, it's all going to change drastically. And again, I keep going back to, there's just something about this concept of trust 
amongst everybody from businesses to consumers to um, to friends to family members that there's just something pretty incredible about that that word that all of a sudden overnight it became so so incredibly powerful um, so for me this is my this is the opportunity in, in, in the new world for me is how do we define trust how do we all accept trust and how do we openly discuss um, trust with each other and when you do say the word trust me I did this oh man does that carry a lot of weight oh yes oh that's excellent thank you words of inspiration and encouragement by you both thank you I want to ask one final question that's not scripted obviously <laughs> <laughs> dare to dream in Romanian is um, oh, translation. Oh, Sorry. I'm like, I gotta <laughs> translate this. So hold on a second. Uh, Elena speaks better <laughs> Romanian than I do. So um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it over to Elena. Oh. Dare to dream. Um, yeah, how do I say dare to dream? It doesn't have a direct translation. The direct translation would be really weird. Um, okay. But it's, um, um, I incredere in visurile tale și urmazele. Ooh, that's beautiful. What she said in Latin. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. I love you both. Thank you so much for taking time today. I really appreciate it very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks, Kat.